All right, guys, it's been um, trout season for a while, and I'm gonna go back to the pond that I've been slaying early in the season during the pre-season, right by my house. Yes, it's during the weekday, so I'm doing daddy duties, but baby is sleeping, so we're out for a, I guess an hour, hopefully, hopefully, maybe more. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go fish uh, that same spot. I hope there's some trout left. You never know. I'm sure it's gonna be very slim picking, so Jimbo's gonna do some BFS fishing as usual. But uh, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I'm gonna go back to my roots, which is all, you know, basically flies and um, hair jigs, right? But not specifically just jigs. Let me show you. Let's get in the water and let's look at the Chibaroshka jig with some flies. All right, guys, today we're gonna be doing some more trout fishing in a local pond. We got a woolly bugger that is connected to a Chibaroshki, Ch Chibaroshka, Chibaroshka, Chibaroshka jig style. And it's basically a, a tungsten bead right here. And let me just back this out for you guys. Typically, it doesn't back out that easily, but I forced it out. You guys see this clip right here? There's a little clip right there. You just clip on to your favorite lure. Okay, and you slide this thing right back on top, just like so. Oops, come on, let's go. You slide it right back on just like so. And boom, this is a 1.5 grams from Suranoia. And uh, together, this is approximately 1 16th ounce but once it's wet it's gonna be a little heavier so let's cast this on my Daiwa Alpha's Air got the chameleon spool got some varivis some thin four pound test line all right so we got some mucky water conditions here not bad casting distance this is more than enough to uh, I guess get the lure out the question is can these trout see my lure I mean I could see it and there's a lot of stuff moving around here. I don't know what the heck's going on. Look at that. I'm almost out of line. Let me just double check my drag. But yep, I think all the fish are going to be like right over there. But I'll do my best and see what I could get here. Because potentially I get some, some bluegills too, some bass. Take this with me. Got him. Got him. Yeah, boy. These trout will always fall for these hair jigs. Uh, ooh, he got a little blue on him. All right. All right. All right, got him unhooked. You guys see this blue on him? A little blue tint? I got polarized glass, so it cuts some of the light, so you can actually uh, see it. But I, I don't know if you guys see it, but it's so beautiful. Off he goes. Oops. Come on, get back in. This way. Come on. Come on. There he goes. Well, you want to go in that way. All right, see a trout. All right, so guys, maybe my line is a little bit small. Like my knot right here is not holding this in. So maybe what I'll do is later on, I'll cut this and I'll put a snap on to hold everything together. Uh, it also makes me switch lures a lot easier, but technically that shouldn't slide up. <laughs> Once it slides up, uh, it actually causes some issues. Like uh, potentially your lure might swing out and uh, you lose your lure and uh, potentially you lose your bead too later. I, I don't know, you know? So uh, yeah, interesting stuff. I guess it's okay for light tackle fishing, but we'll see. We'll keep playing with it. One thing you could also do too is uh, put different hooks on with different type of uh, lures. So I was thinking I could put on uh, like a mosquito hook and then put on like uh, one of those trout worms. I know a lot of people like to use trout worms during the early season. So yeah, maybe I'll do one of those. That's fish, got him. Oh yeah. Another trout trout. All day long, guys. Yeah, this ball thing keeps going up, so it's interesting. Hey, 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 easy. Squirmy, wormy. Let's go. All right, all right, I got you. All right, here you go, quick.
Oop. So spiral casting. So there's two ways for me to retrieve this. I get it close to the bottom, then I slowly reel it and I lift it, then I fall back down and keep reeling the slack. Cause you want this, you don't want too much slack cause you want to detect a bite. And once you feel that getting too close to the bottom, you lift again, the yo-yo. And the other one is you slowly reel and slowly jig it just like that. So kind of, kind of do like a jigging action cause keep it in a, the same water column, right? You gotta figure out where they are at and that's what you need to do. The lift and drop type thing, the yo-yoing, that means you are hitting too much well, you are hitting a lot of the water column because you don't know where they're at, but if you know where they're at, like especially closer to the bottom or the middle, you could do this slow retrieve with a little uh, pumping action, very little. Don't need a lot. And uh, wait for the line to get tight. And that's how you catch it with hair jigs, guys. Marabou jigs, uh, zonker, heck, even plastic. Like if you use like those uh, trout worms, folding trout worms on a jig. That's how I would fish it for these uh, trout. Got him. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Oh, dropped again. All right, guys. So this is my very, very terrible attempt at the San Juan worm. Uh, I haven't, haven't at all been able to fish this on a fly. So let's put this on a Cheburashka jig and uh, let's go fish it. This is gonna be a killer, killer, killer lure for trout. In fact, uh, you guys notice it's almost like a trout worm, the plastic worm. Yes, the fly fishing realm have acknowledged the <laughs> plastic worms and they use their own different materials. These are just chenille bodies, like thin ones. And uh, let me show you guys one more time. You basically use a lighter at the end to uh, heat it up so it shrinks and also it doesn't fray. And yeah, go to town with it. I might show you guys some cool stuff with this, but uh, next time, all right? We're just gonna fish this for right now. See how this goes. So I have a chartreuse head and I have a pink worm. So isn't that just freaking uh, electric chicken? First cast, first cast, first, first, first cast. Oh man, oh man. Let me walk in this way. I've got my net. My net is, my net is not connected to my bag today. You could drop off, that'd be great. This one is not debarbed. I forgot to debarb this one. E e easy, easy. Oh, came off. No need to debarb it, but there you go. Look at that, guys. Look at that beauty. All right, let me put them back in. Peace out. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Turn around. Turn around. That way. There you go. See ya. All right, second cast. Let's go. But yeah, electric chicken color combo. Chartreuse and pink. See if we get some bigger ones. This does look like a bigger profile than that woolly bugger. And that woolly bugger, I think was a green pumpkin, olive green, basically. And uh, it's pretty mucky today. The sun is not really out. So, oh, I had one right there. That's crazy. All right, let's throw it again. Yeah, man, these UV color banging. I might switch to the actual plastic one because I do have some. And since uh, some of them are more buoyant and more um, have more drag, what happened is it's gonna fall a little slower. And I think that will entice them as well. But I wanna catch one more with this because you know, each time you catch a fish with a lure that you made, it just makes you feel so good. And uh, I do a lot of homemade stuff. If you guys are interested in that, you guys check out some of my uh, playlists, I guess. I could put it on the top right hand corner. And yeah, I made lure, make lures for crappies, trout fishing, pan fishing, uh, bass fishing. So yeah, man, I got something for everyone. Last lure we're throwing is this micro, micro nymph. It's a solid tungsten bead on a small, tiny jig. I've thrown this before in this Alpha's Air, but it uh, was on a stock spool. I got the chameleon spool modified. So let's see if we can throw this. This thing is insane. So guys, we saw that there's some pan fish here. So maybe I'll nab a few panfish off the edge. Don't know, but the first thing I want to show you guys is, can I even cast this? And the answer is yes. Look at that. That's actually a very good distance. One thirty-second ounce. And after it gets wet, it's not even going to get that much heavier because it's very, very, very sparse in materials. The question is, can I entice something to bite? This is more of a vertical jigging thing, but I do see a bluegill 
or some sort of panfish right here. See, look, he's coming for it. He's coming for it. I'm, I'm, oh, I, uh, see, he's right there. Dap, oh, watch this. I'm just gonna dap it. The secret technique, guys, just touch the water, just like this, on top. Look at all this panfish. They keep seeing me, so let's dap a new spot. I need a dapping rod, guys. I think I saw something in here. So let's just fling this in here. See what happens. No? Nothing. Oh, I see a nice bass right over there. They're here. Got him. Got him. Got this little guy. Look at that. Ay, 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 easy. All right. Got this guy. In he goes. Probably do like a thousand more of these little dinky bass. And bluegills, perhaps. All right. Let's see if I can entice these fish to bite. The marabou jig, all right? Marabou is freaking killer for trout in the streams. Uh, I don't know about today in this type of water, but we'll give it a shot. That's 1 16th ounce dry, and that's uh, not bad of a cast, to be honest. I'm gonna just let's sink to the bottom and just slowly swim it. Very slow, near the bottom. Just bouncing it off. Hopefully I'll pick up some stuff near the bottom. Maybe some panfish, some bass. But we are here for the trout. All right, now that it's wet, I should be able to cast further and I know where they're at. They're like right there, yes. Earlier it was carried by the wind, but now it's just a little heavier. Maybe it'll be a little better. But it's dark water here, no sun. Maybe they'll like this type of presentation instead. Now, this is a little heavier than the well, it's a lot heavier than a trout magnet, so maybe I could put it afloat and actually get it out further. And then we'll see if those uh, trout want it. But today is a tough day, man. Oh, got him. That's what I'm talking about. Marabou jig never fails. I'm telling you guys, Marabou jig is the money sauce. No, 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 not around that stake. All right. We're right here. All right, look at that. Beauty. Look at that beauty. All right, let me, let me get him up. Let me get him up. Let's see if I can release him right in the water. I don't want to pick him up if I don't have to. And I think I can. Well, guys, that was really really tough like not that many fish and there's a lot of people going around the pond doing some bass fishing uh i saw them i think they might have caught like two fish but yeah it's it's been pretty pretty tough so uh i'm gonna downsize for bass fishing because i didn't see them catch that much but i'm also gonna pick another spot to go catch some uh bass uh, but do you guys like this rig? I think this rig is pretty awesome. I mean, I always, always love hair jigs. I love uh, flies and different type of fly designs. And a lot of my jigs, like my woolly bugger jig, is basically from a fly. You know, it's inspired by the woolly bugger fly. So yeah, for those who don't have a tying vice or any sort of uh, means of making their own fly inspired jigs, you can always just buy some bigger flies, streamers, and get this Chuburashka jig. And you know, rig it up and go to town, catch some fish. I caught a lot of trout, I would say, with uh, the woolly buggers and marabou in my past, in my life. And I totally, totally advise you guys, if you guys like catching panfish or trout, give it a shot. And I believe Bait Finesse Empire will carry these, the Surinoya, those Chuburashka jigs. So give it a shot. Uh, they're tungsten head, so they are eco-friendly. Um, I think so far when I'm playing with this, with my super, super thin line, uh, it, sometimes the bead do slide up. 
And uh, I think we can solve that by just using a clip because we <laughs> bait fedness uh, folks love using clips on our lines cause, So uh, we don't you know trim our lines too much and you know short shorten our casting distance And that will prevent that thing to sliding up But if you guys don't want to use that I think there's probably some alternative you could try I was thinking maybe I'll tie a few knots onto um, The wire part the head part where you actually, the eye part where you actually tie a line to like tie it twice and then actually um, You know tie a line back on and that should do it but uh, I really like the idea of a clip more than um, you know tying extra line on it. But if you guys are running into the issue, you guys don't have clips, I think that's a, a workaround. But I don't know, what do you guys think? You guys have suggestions? Feel free to leave me a comment below. Um, I think I'm done for trout fishing right now for at least stock trout. I may do some runs up like to the mountains for some wild trout. Who knows? But uh, leave me a comment below. I am also thinking about snakehead fishing because that is what South Jersey's all about, baby. But right now, I'm going to do some bass fishing. So thank you for watching The Fish Don't Wait. Make sure you guys get out there and catch some fish. To the loose!